Hi, I'm Jay Kramer, I'm president of Network Storage Advisors, and I have the honor of introducing our next keynote address. And it's someone that I've known for over two decades. Um, someone who's played a very significant role in, in the emergence of the network storage industry. Uh, he was an early evangelist of, of NAS and SAN uh, stor storage topologies. He's educated the marketplace in um, all aspects of storage and invested a, a lot of his personal resources in uh, the interoperabil uh, interoperability needed across all the vendors in our industry um, in, in order to advance uh, our standards in, in storage networking. Uh, this is an individual who continued as an industry uh, luminary educating the marketplace uh, on the initial emergence of all flash uh, storage arrays. And his company is a previous winner of the Flash Memory Summit uh, Best of Show Awards uh, for making a difference in customer implementations. Uh, yesterday, for many of you on this stage, uh, you saw this individual um, as uh, someone who uh, personally uh, won an award uh, of the IT brand Pulse uh, Innovation Award for his contributions to, uh, to the industry. Uh, so it's uh, my honor to uh, introduce to you uh, Tom Isakovich, CEO, Nimbus Data Systems. <laughs> Thanks, Jay, for the intro. Hi, everyone. Great. Thank you. So the topic of today's discussion is of how all flash arrays uh, can solve storage problems cost effectively. And I personally believe, we believe at Nimbus Data that there is a gross misconception about the cost of all flash systems. Uh, I constantly field calls from analysts who eagerly await the time when flash is affordable and customers who have been effectively told by vendors that that's not going to happen, it's not going to happen anytime soon, you're going to continue to use hard drives for a very long time. All flash is a niche at the top end, it's expensive, it's not really ready for mainstream adoption. So I'd like to kind of walk through our view on this and, uh, and talk you through some of the math that we've done concerning this space. So we can advance to the next slide, please. Oh, forgive me. This one here? Ah, thank you. Perfect. Thank you. So, what does anyone want to guess what this number is right up here? Well, yes, 0 0.40. Oh, we got smart. Okay. Before lunch, I get it. Everyone's a little punchy. Good. <laughs> Let's get an honest guess. 0 0.40. 40 cents. Average dollar per gigabyte of MLC flash today. This is... DRAM exchange information, publicly available. It looks at 64 gigabit, 128 gigabit NAND flash in the general spot market today. Anyone want to take a guess what this might be? <laughs> this is the average cost per gigabyte of an all flash array that uses the very same NAND that's 40 cents per gig. So there's a bit of a discrepancy there. Where does it all go? So we've established that 40 cents per gig of it is the MLC flash. The NAND controller itself is generally commanding about $2 per gigabyte in the cost structure today. If you look at the cost of a completed SSD, on a cost per gigabyte basis for an enterprise SSD. That's about what you're going to find in the general purpose market today. $2 going to the NAND controller. A NAND controller that is typically maybe a $50 to $100 part is going to cost you actually about a 6x premium in a kitted completed SSD. Then there's the array. The chassis, the system controllers, the software licenses that go along with it collectively, well, that's about another $5 per gigabyte in the stacking. If you're buying an enterprise array, nine times out of 10, you're buying it through a reseller. Reseller's got to make some money. The reseller is going to add about $2 per gig on the effective cost of that array. Now, if the reseller is selling the product, 
They're getting it through a distributor. The distributor's got to make money in this process too. That's about another 70 cents per gig. And the wonderful sales team that visits you, they're really not taking you to a baseball game or to dinner for free. You might think it's free, it's not free. The vendor's paying for that salesperson, they're paying those costs, and those costs are embedded in the effective cost of what you're paying for that array. So through this math, you end up with a 40 cent part becoming an over $10 part by the time it arrives at the end user in the form of an actual utilizable enterprise storage system. This is a problem. Now, this problem is compounded by another number. You might get sick of this game by now, but bear with me. This number. This is the average utilization rate of a storage system in a modern enterprise, 42%. So customers that are buying all this capacity at $10 and change a gigabyte are actually only effectively using about 42% of it. And so what are they effectively paying on a cost per gigabyte basis for that array based on that low utilization level? 25. $25 per gig is the effective cost per gig of an enterprise storage array that's utilized by industry standard utilization rates today. Now, if we do some very basic math, we get to a number which is 63. That's how many times more expensive the effective cost of that enterprise storage array is compared to the NAND flash cost that's coming out of the fabs. And so when you wonder, where is enterprise flash adoption why is it not happening? Where is it going? What's slowing it down? I've given you here some of the key data points that we see from an end user perspe perspective that's holding this market back. There are layers of inefficiency in technology, in distribution, in vertical integration that are dramatically driving up the cost per gigabyte of enterprise flash arrays at the end user level. And if we want to see this technology truly take on hard drive technology as a de facto next generation standard for primary storage, if we all want to prove the industry analysts wrong, that this market is actually a lot bigger than they say it is, it's growing faster than they say it is, this number has to change. Now, 63X is a pretty big markup. I just thought I would maybe put that in comparison to some other things that I'm sure no one in this audience besides this first item is ever actually buying. A coffee bean, 2X. <laughs> Cannabis, 11X. This is public information. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Let's raise the stakes a little bit. 38X. Then comes enterprise storage. <laughs> to only be beaten by one thing in the market. <laughs> so we're slightly better than cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what this data says. Or we're all drug addicts uh, of a legal one. And this is, in our view, one of the things that needs to change. And so our, our perspective on this, on what needs to happen, is that the SSD controller cost has to come down. And we're seeing this. I remember when uh, Steck uh, entered the market with the first enterprise SSDs. A massive, massive multiple they were able to earn in the market for their products. Their stock price was skyrocketing. They were able to charge customers effectively thousands of dollars for a controller that cost very little to make. And Nimbus Data actually, as a company, when we embarked on building our first all-flash array, we specifically said, you know what, we're actually not going to buy an SSD and stick it in our box, because in doing so, we validate this business model that overcharges customers for controllers, when by actually building our own drive, we can eliminate a lot of that cost. Now, over the last five years, I think the SSD vendors have somewhat rationalized what is a fair price for controller technology embedded in an SSD. And so while you're not necessarily paying $10 a gig for an SSD like you were, say, three, four years ago, you're paying, say, two or three dollars a gig today, our view is it's still too much and it needs to be reevaluated and reassessed. Next, the array vendors themselves need to rationalize the cost of their frames. They're used to pushing big boxes. 
big boxes that have a lot of complexity and require a lot of support. All flash arrays are beautiful because they're simple and they're elegant. You don't need to tier data. You don't need to migrate data. You simply have consistent, predictable latency. And because of that, now's the time to really rationalize the cost of the array structure itself. It can't be $5 per gig of structure in order to enable 40 cents per gig of NAND. There has to be cost reduction there. The third data point, frankly, is that the distribution must get more efficient. It must get more cost effective, or frankly, it simply must be eliminated. The fact that end users are paying an effective 40% premium for their enterprise storage arrays simply because it must traverse complex and costly channels in the form of distribution, resellers, and sales teams that support those resellers and the vendors, it is driving the cost up for you. That needs to change. And candidly, the utilization rates have to get better. We can't be operating storage arrays at 42% utilization. You're burning money. You need to drive those utilization rates up north of 90% so that you're not contributing to this 63x multiple that's driving enterprise all flash arrays out of reach. And if we don't do these things, the risk for the market is very simple. That after this presentation, someone like me goes on Amazon and lights up 10 terabytes in a matter of five minutes by filling out some web forms and putting in some credit card information and they're enabled in the cloud and they have storage and it's hot and it's ready and it's running. If we don't fix the hardware cost, the distribution cost, the flash controller cost, we risk watching this happen and vendors, for example, such as us included, losing out in the process. So these are the things that need to happen. Now if they do happen, customers end up with an all flash platform that obviously increases performance, improves reliability, scales efficiently, dramatically reduces energy, and can dramatically reduce ongoing storage costs. Now, Nimbus Data as a company has adopted a philosophy with our hardware architecture and our go-to-market that we believe will help bring all flash mainstream, to tear down these artificial costs that are making all flash enterprise arrays too expensive for the majority of customers out there. It starts with our hardware architecture, which I'll get into, but also uh, involves our go-to-market. We offer our products principally direct, our products are simple, can be deployed in about 15 minutes, so you don't need an army of engineers to support them, you don't need professional services to implement them, you don't need outages to upgrade them, they deploy easily, quickly, and in that sense we can sell them directly to customers very, very easily. Now when we do so, the kinds of customers we're selling to are some pretty big customers today, customers like Epic who makes the largest healthcare uh, and clinical management software in the market today. Uh, Cynix, one of the largest IT distributors, uses our technology behind their database to power and accelerate their own internal database. We sell very frequently into virtualized environments where the nature of desktop and server virtualization mean that there's a lot of contention on the storage and that contention demands that the storage be ultra responsive and very, very fast. And so customers like VMware, Citrix, Coke Industries, Meritrust Credit Union, these are customers of ours that are using us in virtual infrastructure. We also have a number of companies that are building very cost-effective private and public clouds using All Flash today. Companies like eBay, University of Michigan, Digital River, Cloudmark, Woe.com, and others. And finally, our products are making inroads into the field of high-performance computing and animation and technical and analytical environments. So customers like Disney, DreamWorks, NBC Universal, and others are using our technology today. So just quickly in a nutshell about our product and what we have at Nimbus Data, uh, we have an all-flash array. We've built it from the ground up. We didn't take a general purpose server and load it with general purpose SSDs. And based on what I told you before, you can probably guess the reason why. There's just simply too much cost stacking in a general purpose server and in a generic SSD for us to be able to offer into the market a cost 
justified all flash solution. So we actually built this platform from the ground up, from the silicon on up, to incorporate our own system architecture, our own controller technology, and our own storage operating system from the ground up. Now this is a solution that scales from just a handful of terabytes to many, many petabytes. It offers no single point of failure. It delivers unified storage, meaning we support, support both SAN and NAS storage simultaneously. We support all major networking in, interconnects, Ethernet, fiber channel, and InfiniBand, and we do so with industry-leading performance and industry-leading power efficiency. Today, we deliver this into the market, leveraging the most cost-effective MLC 1x nanometer NAND available today, and we're considering how 3D NAND and TLC NAND can allow us to further reduce cost in the long run so that we, we can make our solutions even more affordable. Now, from a high availability perspective, we have a dual controller architecture. Here you can see the back of our device, uh, and we'd be happy to show you this on the expo floor as well. Uh, we support, of course, non-disruptive software updates and full hot swap components. We have an architecture internally, and this is a patent pending architecture we developed, that allows us to extract the full performance potential out of flash technology. Most of the all-flash array vendors by taking generic SSDs and putting them in generic servers are unable to harness the true performance potential of these SSDs. And that's because they're bottlenecked. They're bottlenecked between the controller and the shelves that hold the SSDs. So what we did is we merged those two things together. We put the controllers and the SSDs together in the same chassis. And this gave us the opportunity to multiply, 6x multiply, the amount of bandwidth between the SSDs and the controllers. This is a technology we call our parallel memory architecture. It's one of the key reasons why we have such industry-leading performance in the market today. We also support a scale-out architecture so customers can start small and grow non-disruptively to petabytes in scale. For us, it's just as much about offering a simple solution as it is giving you the opportunity as the end user to drive up your utilization rates. By being able to expand on demand non-disruptively, you don't have to overbuy storage. You don't have to buy stuff that you're not using. You buy what you need, and you can grow to petabytes with the same framework without any disruption. And this is a, a picture of how our architecture works. And we're happy to get into some more detail about this architecture if you come visit us uh, at our booth. Now, in terms of software functionality, we provide a comprehensive software stack, the equivalent of or better than what you would get from a classic enterprise array vendor, meaning features like snapshots, replication, deduplication, compression, encryption, thin provisioning, cloning, web interfaces, APIs, everything you need in one software image with one management interface. And rather than nickel and dime customers for each individual feature, we simply bundle all of this software, since it's our own software, we simply bundle it with our hardware at no additional cost. This number, you'll never guess. This is the number of systems that we have out in the market today. It's a proven product across a number of very large customers. This number, the utilization rate that we've been able to drive at our end user customers with no perceivable loss in performance at this utilization rate compared to their traditional utilization rate of net 42%. So we're able to drive significantly higher utilization rates. That's going to allow us to enable our customers to help themselves reduce the cost that they're paying for storage. And this number is our effective cost per gig for an all-flash array in the market today. It's not 40 cents. I'd like it to be but it's about as close, and I think the closest, anyone in the industry has gotten to doing so. And so this is part of our vision of what we're doing at Nimbus Data. Um, if you'd like to learn more, uh, you can do it uh, right here.
That's our booth number. <laughs> Come take a look at the Expo Hall. I think it's open for another hour or two. Thank you very much. <clears throat>